Hello everyone, welcome to the latest video here in European Elite as we look at some of the best players to have graced the great game of volleyball in Europe over the last few years. Today we're rolling back the years to 2000-2010 as three people pick their team of the decade. And the three people alongside me for that today are Massimo Barbellini, Fidis Kozlowski and Giovanni Caprara. Gentlemen, great to see you. I hope you're all doing well. First of all, Massimo, how do you look back on this decade as a whole for women's volleyball in Europe? Uh, this decade was really interesting, uh, I guess. Uh, I, I remember that uh, I think that there was uh, two teams overall that uh, dominated this, this decade. It was Italian national team, Russian national team in the world and in Europe too. I think that uh, this is what we can remember. These teams have to fight okay, against unbelievable teams in the world as Brazil, as uh, USA, as China. But when we talk about uh, European, European players and so European teams, I think that we must remember these two teams overall. Uh, German team too, because I think that, that also German teams did a really, really good job in this period. Okay, there was Serbia that was growing up their level. But if I have to remember two teams, uh, I think that uh, Italy and Russia was really, really the more interesting teams. Yeah, I think that's reflected in the shortlist that we've got for the players. Let's get straight to it. Let's pick our first player to go in this team of the decade. Uh, as has been tradition with the other videos we've done, we started with the setter. So let's do that again here. And I'm going to say to Felix, first of all. Felix, who is the player you would like to put forward for the setter position in this team of the decade? Yeah, of course. Um, as, as always, uh, creating a dream team and having just big choices like, um, like we have um, for the setup positions. Um, yeah, I think we, we, we can remember some very good setters from this decade. Um, some of them uh, had already good, already good nominated for the, for the next de decade. But um, yeah, I had two names in my mind um, that I think was the two setters in Europe at this time that make um, yeah, a big difference to the game and that was on the Italian side um, as Massimo already said Italy and Russia were the two teams that was dominating uh, this decade it was um, of course uh, Eleonora Robianco from Italy and Irina Kirilova and in the end I made my choice for Eleonora Robianco I had uh, the opportunity to work one year with her together in Italy and yeah, um, as I saw a lot of great setters in this time, even we had a great setter in this time uh, in the German national team, uh, Leo Lubianco, she was making things really different and um, I can remember one training where she was setting on uh, such baskets and she was sitting with closed eyes on the baskets and she hit every ball inside and that was just crazy to see for me. And um, yeah, I would choose Lubianco um, as a setter. Okay. Giovanni, great to speak to you. I hope you're doing well. Is uh, Elo Elo Eleonora the <laughs> selection for you as well? Okay, we start immediately with what big difficult for me. Eh? You, you put me in difficult. You want that I, I go to sleep abroad or out of house this evening because I have uh, Irina Kirilova in my, my house, of course. If I have to think about all um, career, my chooses for Irina, but uh, I think it's more correct to take uh, Lobianco for this decade because uh, Irina in this decade didn't play. Uh, all time because she didn't play three four years I think uh, and Lobianco was uh, so important for national team and for the club so my choice in this case is for uh, Eleonora Lobianco and I, I think that uh, for Irina can be a, a big opportunity also in the previous decade no? from uh, 19 to 99. Okay and Massimo is, is it three votes out of three? Yes, I agree. I agree with Felix and, Zan and Giovanni. I, I vote for Lobianco, but I think that for Irina, we must consider not the previous decade, but the previous century. Because I think <laughs> she was the best, the best, uh, the best setter in the, in the previous century. Because if you see her palmares, is unbelievable. So for this decade, I vote for Leo. But if you want to make 
one vote, one uh, vote for the previous century, I vote for Irina. But for this decade, I think uh, uh, Leo Eleonora um, deserves absolutely because uh, she won everything: World Championship, World Cup, European uh, European Championship, Champions League. So she won everything. Yeah, two Champions League titles with that Bergamo side. How good were they? But I think that is not the only one that she won. Uh, I think that she was unbelievable. I worked there in national team and uh, I had the honor to work with her also for many years in Turkey. And uh, absolutely, his level is, her level is really, really, really great. Okay, perfect. Easy start then. Eleonora Lobianco is our setter in the team. Next, let's put some middle blockers on the court and I'm going to come back to uh, Giovanni first. Who is the first middle blocker you would like to put in this team of the decade? Okay, uh, in this case, I, we have to consider, for example, the four uh, Italian middle blockers, Barassa, Paggi, De Giri, Gioli, uh, all of them are very great players and uh, they are complete players, no? And about the two Russian uh, middle blockers, um, I think they are in one level a little bit less than the, the Italian middle blocker. But my choose is for uh, the other two middle blockers. Rava, first of all, close to the setter because she was incredibly fast. And maybe one of the first middle blockers that take approach after defense quickly and was always ready to take approach. So for me, she was very important, especially for Cannes, for the club. They won two uh, Champions League, if I remember good, in the beginning of uh, the decade. No? Yeah, so the first... Great. My first choice is for Christina Rava. Uh, for Rava, no, so, no, sorry, Christina. The name I don't remember. Victoria. Victoria Rava, sorry. Eh? <laughs> it's okay. Uh, let's go back to uh, Massimo. Would she be in your team as well? Oh, okay, I have three names. I have three names: Jolly, Rava, and Furst. Uh, for first, I put uh, Jolly because I never saw one middle blocker so decisive in uh, in the, in competitions. She won uh, MVP in World Cup, in Grand Champions Cup. She was best uh, scorer in many competitions. And uh, so for the first, I put Simona Jolly. For second, it's difficult. Maybe first. First, because uh, I agree completely with Giovanni about Rava. was unbelievable. I play many times against her. But, but first was, uh, I think, for many times, for many competitions, I really like her way to play in the block. And also as she was in the court, also as she was in the court. So my first choice is for Jolie, second choice is for first. Okay. And Felix, back to you. Uh, how do you see this category? It's, you know, dominated by Italians and Russians. Is that reflected in your choice? Um, no, I think it's dominated by Russians and Italians because, like we said before, in this decade, uh, Russia and Italy were the two dominating teams. But I'm I'm going with uh, Gianni uh, because <laughs> um, actually, for me, the, the the middle blockers that I would choose um, on my first two spots are uh, Christiane first and Victoria Rava. Um, I think when we choose the middles, we have always been a little bit different because one is playing a little bit more far from the setter. That means uh, she has to go more in front of the setter to attack and has to be very good in blocking. And we had, especially in this decade, we had the middle blocker always close to the setter that uh, was really needed by a slight attack, by a fast attack. And um, I agree with both Gianni and Massimo. I think Rava and Jolly was the two strongest uh, slight fast attackers in this decade. Um, I would go a little bit more for Rava. She didn't have such a great national team in this time so she could just show up in the club team uh, as she can but she sometimes had numbers um, of attacks and scoring like uh, opposites at this time so uh, there were matches i saw that she got 40 50 balls and um, i can remember the final four 2009 in Cannes, uh, where she played the match against uh, against i think fenerbahce was it and it was a very close match and I think she had 45, 40, 50 balls and uh, she was the main scorer of the team. Um, so that's why I would choose uh, Rava for the middle blocker close to the setter. And if we talk about the other middle blocker position, I would choose first. Um, I had the opportunity to work in Germany uh, with her for some years. And yeah, she is for sure, uh, she was for sure one of the best blockers in this decade. Okay. 
perfect. And Giovanni, you said you'd like to have Rava as your first blocker. Who would your second pick be? I, I agree with Felix. Uh, my two choices are for Rafa and Forst. I think they are more complete middle blocker in this list. Uh, of course, uh, all coach wants to, 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 to be the coach of Jolly or uh, Legeri. I, I coach Legeri for two years. She's incredible. Jolly, Jolly also. But I think that uh, Christina and uh, Victoria are more complete uh, as middle blocker and especially um, Rafa can... can um, can build the team, no? And Rava was so important, can because without Rava, can uh, is almost impossible to win uh, the Champions League. But uh, uh, in Italy, for example, if you change uh, Simona or Leggeri or Paggi, I think don't change too much. Okay, so can we can we all agree that Victoria Rava should be in the team? Is that is that okay? The biggest challenge is for Massimo. Like yes, 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 but I think that. I'm not, I don't have to decide. I think the, 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 the more votes are for Rav and Furst, so I agree. Okay, so maybe B Babalini can have a choice later on in this team when you two disagree. Okay, so our two middle blockers, Victoria Rava and Christian Furst, to go with Eleanor Lebianco as the setter. Next, let's go and choose the libero of this team. Who are we going to pick first? Let's go to Felix. Who would you like to have as your libero? Yeah, for me, of course, again, four great names on the list, but there were one Libro who was really outstanding in this decade, and that was uh, Paola Cardudo. I mean, she was by far uh, the best defender uh, that I ever saw on this. She made, she, she put new standards on Liberos, what means defending and uh, receiving and uh, yeah, and that's such as she were, I think she was very young already in the World Championship 2002 when she was becoming World Champion. And yeah, my, cho my choice goes uh, clearly for Cardulo. Back to Giovanni, is that the name you were also thinking of? I think this is the, the, the most easy choice uh, because, uh, of course, for Mina, Golden uh, are a great player and I forgot the, the last name, but uh, uh, Paola is uh, for sure the, the, the best libero in this decade and maybe the best liberal time. Uh, she's incredible in all skills and uh, also in set, for example, she was always precise uh, with the big uh, quality in the first touch in defense or, or reception. So. For me, I, I don't have a doubt in this case, Paolo Cardulo. Fantastic. Two out of two. Massimo, I think you're... Mo oh, yeah, there you are. Yes, um, for me, it's the same. No problem for this choice. Uh, as Gianni said, also, I work with Gulden, really good uh, libero. But I think that in this category, there is no, no fight because uh, Paolo was unbelievable. My only regrets for her is the many injuries that she had, because yeah. probably she can, she can, she can win, she can win many, many, many more titles. But uh, she was uh, really unlucky. But when she was uh, in the court, uh, every time Italy won. This is one rule. So absolutely no problem for this choice. Really, really quick. Yeah, two European Championships, one World Championship as well. We were talking in one of the other videos we did about the next decade, about Monica De Gennaro. Do you expect Italy to carry on producing these kind of players? Is it something in the volleyball school that they teach? I don't know. I don't know if there is one school in Italy. For sure, uh, we are one people, defending people, no? in football, in volleyball, in old, in, in probably in this rule. We have uh, great, great players, uh, and for sure the best two liberos in the two decades as are Cardulo in this decade that we are considering. In the, in the decade that you consider in another video was the Gennaro. So it means that probably in Italy we put many attention for this rule, not only for the libero, but for the situation of the defense in general. Okay, excellent. Right, we've got four players already in our team. Now Paolo Cardulo goes with Lobianco first and Rava to go into our team of the decade from 2000 to 2010. Next, we're going to pick the opposite. Uh, four names to pick one for this. Taismani Aguero, Neslihan Demir, Katarzyna Skowronska and Natalia Safronova. Felix, first coming to you, who would you like to pick as the opposite? My vote would, would go to Taismani Aguero. Um, I think she really dominated this decade and um, yeah, she were 
of course, a great opposite, a great attacker. And a great attacker means she could really attack every ball. She could attack the high ball. She could attack the quick ball. She could go for combination attacks. Uh, she had tips. She had roll shots. She had really every ball uh, that she could go to attack. But she was also a great defender. She was a setter in the uh, previous decade, uh, in the Cuban uh, time. So, yeah, for me, she was really a complete player, not an opposite that just go to attack. She was a really complete player. And I remember a lot of matches that we played against Italy in this time. And yeah, Aguero for us uh, was 99% she were unstoppable for us. So yeah, my choice would go to Aguero. Okay, another player from that fantastic Italy side of later in the decade. Uh, Giovanni, for you? Wow, so difficult. <laughs> so you changed position Aguero because I, for me Aguero was in four in the beginning, but okay. Now if you, if you put Aguero as opposite, of course, my choice is for a tie. Uh, in, in the beginning I chose uh, Katia because I was thinking that uh, Aguero was in four, but uh, if you put Aguero in two, Aguero is my first choice. I love a lot Neslian, for me was one incredible player, I coach her two years and uh, she was so humble, so always ready to help the team every day. Uh, Katia also, uh, for example, about Katia, I remember very well his eyes during the Anthem uh, National Team, uh, during the Anthem National, and uh, she was incredible. She was a, a big player and also, I have to be thankful to her because she, she, she helped me to, to win the, the World Championship in 2006, but uh, uh, a tie is more complete, she can defend, she can uh, do everything, so my first choice is for Tai Aguero. Okay. And Massimo? I agree with my colleagues because uh, I was really lucky to work with Tai Maris also before this decade because she arrived in Italy in 98. She was setter and then she would transform as opposite, but my colleagues talk about all the best characteristics of her, okay. Also, she was unbelievable in defense, in service, uh, okay. No, no chance to say no for Aguero, but I think that we have to remember also Gamova and Neslian, Demir, because I think that uh, for, different, for different situation, there were unbelievable, unbelievable, absolutely. But uh, I think that Aguero was complete. And I think that uh, also she won uh, Olympic Games in the decade. She won Olympic Games with Cuba, World Cup with Italy. Uh, and I think that in that moment, uh, she was really important for the, the jump of Italian national team when I was coach. So in the, in the world level, not only in the European level. So my vote is for Time Maris. Okay. So Aguero gets into our team, but Massimo, how good was Gamova and Demir, I mean, you know, two amazing players in their own right. They could easily be in any team of the decade. They've just been edged out by Aguero. But how much did they contribute to women's volleyball? But Gamova was unbelievable. I think that was unbelievable. One unbelievable was Spiker, opposite. Uh, I think that uh, she was one of the first, really, one of the first players that played with, uh, with one power and taking the ball so high as many players cannot take the ball in this, in this situation. And also she was, she continued his career for many, many times, because remember she played till uh, two years, three years ago. And uh, about the mirror, as Gianni was really lucky to, to work with her one year in, uh, two years in national team, one year in club. And I play many times uh, against her and I have many problems against her when I play I mean, I played against her, my team played against her, because I think that she was, uh, she, she was Neslian. <laughs> she was one player that she can create in every moment, uh, one thing with one in a very, very easy way. She was doing in easy way, the right thing in uh, easy, easy. Maybe if the, boy, if the thing was so difficult, she can solve the problem. So she was over, absolutely over the top as player. Not only as opposite, but I think as player. And Giovanni, you're the best person to ask about your Katarina Gamova. What was she like to work with on a daily basis in the international season? Italia Gamova, first of all, I have to tell you that she loved a lot his country. 
She loved a lot to Russia, and she played for Russia in every match with passion and with. Uh, she wants to win everything. Okay, she is a, a tall player, and of course you have to be patient with her when she defends because she don't want to defense every time. Of course, it's, it's normal. But if she wants, believe me, she always is good in defense. Great technique, especially to fall down. Seems almost a, a stupid thing to, to tell, but she, she can fall down very, very well with great technique. And she is good in block, and she was good, very, very good in block and also in service. And I, I, of course, I remember very well the final in the World Championship 2006. She was in. Incredible! She spiked everything, everywhere in all position, and uh, she won almost all, all, all attack. Perfect. Okay, that's a great uh, thing to say about Gamova. Let's go on to the final position. Two hitters we need for this team. Um, some great names on the shortlist that the guys watching this video can see now. Uh, Piccinini <laughs> again there, having featured in the team of the decade from 2010 to 20. 19 as well. Um, Massimo, who's your first outside hitter? But I have two. Uh, the first is Sokolova. I think that uh, I'm really sorry that I never had the chance to work with her. I think that she was an unbelievable player. I think maybe one of the best players of the history. I think because I remember that she started as, opposite, as uh, middle blockers. Then opposite she played and, and, and like outside it. I think that uh, she was one of the best players in the history. So for sure Sokolova. And uh, as second I put again Piccinini because uh, I don't care if she's, if she's uh, in, the second, in the second decade. Because also in this decade she won everything. I repeat, World Championship, World Cup, European, European uh, Championship, Champions League. And uh, I know there are many players, for example, I liked a lot Artomonova, but I think that Artomonova too was probably in the previous decade was playing at really, really high level. So my choice are for Sokolova and Piccini. Okay. Felix, back to you. Anyone different in your selection? Um, no, I think this was maybe the, the hardest choice um, to choose the, the, the right uh, outside hitters. Um, like Massimo already said, uh, uh, such great names like Sokolova, Atamanova, Gordina, uh, Piccinini, Glinka again, uh, Osma Krovic, um, player that I think was a lot of times underrated. And of course, as well, um, Angelina uh, Grün, Angelina uh, Hübner now, that played also like outside and opposite and I think she had also great time in Italy and great time with the national team. Okay. But I'm agree. I'm agree with Massimo. Uh, my first choice was also Sokolova, Ibiuva Sokolova. And uh, comparing Sokolova and comparing the other outsides to Sokolova, my second choice was also Piccinini. So it's um, yeah. First, it's two outside hitters that can pass, can uh, receive the ball very well. That is very complete. Uh, Outside hitters, um, I can remember my again my time when I was in Bergamo and I had the honor to work also one year with uh, Francesca. Uh, in defense, you you never needed to tell her really uh, where she needs to go because she could really read the game and she could uh, anticipate the game. That was uh, something really incredible. And yeah, I think with these two, uh, Lubia Sokolova and Francesca Piccinini, I think we have a very high quality, not only in hitting, attacking the ball. Um, we have also very high quality in passing and uh, defending with these two. All three of you coached in this decade. Felix, do you notice a major difference in the way the game was played then to how it is now? Yes, I think for sure the, 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 the women's volleyball is always, it seems to be always like one, two steps uh, back to the men's volleyball. So, um, to Compare this decade uh, with the decade from 2000 to 2009, I think the, the speed of the game uh, is raising a lot. Um, and I think the role of the opposite is going to change a lot. Um, like we said in the decade 2000 to 2009, we really were looking for middle blockers that have a very good slide attack because we didn't have so many opposites that could really attack from for a good back row, back row ball. Um, so yeah, I think this was the, the these are the big difference um, uh, between this decade from now and to this time.
Okay. And, and, Giovanni... of course, and, and of course, I must say, sorry, and of course, yep. I must say the, the, the physical level from the players now uh, compared to this time, uh, it, it's really, it, it really uh, goes, it really weighs. But has that helped as well with the development of sports science and the technology that you guys have available now? Yes, I think also. I think also. I think also. Giovanni, we've had two votes each so far for Sokolova and Piccinini. Are they your two selections? Easy? Of course. My choice is useless because we already <laughs> chose uh, Sokolova and Francesca. Of course, Sokolova is uh, without doubt the most talented player that I coach in my career. And uh, she can do everything. She can spike, she can defense, she can spike in glass middle blocker as opposite or position four. And uh, so, uh, for sure, Sokolova. About the second choice, I would like to spend some word for Angelina Grun, but uh, uh, not because she's better than Francesca. Francesca deserves uh, this kind of... Uh, uh, of judgment all, uh, also in this decade, but uh, uh, Angelina, maybe Francesca is already satisfied because it's in, in this decade, no? We, and uh, we can spend one, uh, one vote for, uh, for Angelina. And Eugenia also is a great player, so it's a very difficult choice. But I, am, I agree with uh, Massimo and Felix, we can choose, of course, uh, Luba and Francesca. With Piccinini of seven Champions League titles, it's an incredible achievement. And, you know, she's still playing volleyball as well. How much has she inspired a generation of female volleyball players in Italy? Um, Massimo can start. No, no, no Felix. <laughs> no, I can, I can just remember that, um, yeah, again, I, when I came to Bergamo and um, I think it was the first or second day in Bergamo. I went to the practice and in front of the gym, there were like 20, 30 kids uh, waiting uh, in front of the hall, in front of uh, Pala Norda. And they were all just waiting for Piccinini to give an autogram from her, to make a picture with her. And, and this was actually day by day. Uh, it's going to happen. And yeah, of course, people come to see Lobianco, people come to see uh, uh, first. But in the end, most of them, they came only to see uh, Piccinini. And I think she had an, she gave a big, a big impulse in the Italian volleyball. And Massimo, do you think we'll see a player like her to win as many titles like that ever again? I think it's not a case. When you win so, so many titles, it's not a case. And overall, overall, the last two Champions League, I think that uh, she was really important. It was really important. If you see the final, differ in different way. Because in the final against Vaki, when she was in uh, in Casal Mazzore, she did 20, 23 points. I don't know many, many, many points. In the last final against uh, Conegliano, she did for sure less points, but she was really important. I remember really well in the last months. Uh, to create one situation in our team. Overall, after that, we lost uh, uh, the, the Italian championship 10 days before uh, against, uh, against uh, Conegliano. She, I think that she infected the situation, the, the, the team, with the idea that we can win. We can win. And so I think that she was really important, but not only with the words, but with the facts in the court. Many, many, maybe main less attacks but more defense and uh, all what i what i felt is that all the players are sure when uh, are more safe when she was in the court this is uh, one thing really important uh, for one team that uh, have to play finals and so and many all the players know that she was she she used to play this final maybe you can win or you can lose because why why not you can lose for sure but uh, if you feel safe when you have one player like her close to you, I think that it's really important. Felix, we've selected the team now. You know, so many Italians in this team, Cardulo, Lobianco, Aguero and Piccinini as well. Do you think that reflects Italy's dominance both in the club and international uh, sphere in that decade? Yes, of course. As we started already this conversation and uh, I remember we chose the two middles. Um, and Massimo wanted to have Jolly. And my mind was, wait, Massimo, you will get a lot of Italians <laughs> uh, still in the team. So, no, of course, this decade was um, dominated by Italy a lot. Okay, perfect. 
Gentlemen, it looks like we have our team. We have a team of Sokolova, Piccinini, Aguero, Rava, First, Lobianco, and Cardulo. Would this team be able to beat the team of the decade from 2019? Do you think, you know, it is a, we are able to compare those teams, or do we just have to accept it's different eras? Volleyball was played in different ways. Yes, of course we can win because we choose this kind of player. And we are better than uh, my Giovanni and uh, Svetlana. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Uh, it's very, diff it's very difficult uh, world because uh, all two teams are uh, incredible, are very, very, very good players. So we, we can play, we can try. And I asked this question at the end of each of these videos: Would this team be easy to coach with so many star names? I think yes. It's never one problem to coach uh, many stars. For me, it's not a problem. <laughs> the problem is when you work with players that maybe are not stars but believe to be. This is the problem. <laughs> to coach with to coach this team is uh, is one pleasure. Is one pleasure. Well, guys, Bravo, it's been... <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, it's been a pleasure to spend this uh, morning with you discussing this team of the decade. I think we can agree we've picked seven great names. Uh, that would grace any court of volleyball and would surely put on a great show for the fans watching. Um, hopefully, all you guys have a great week and hopefully we'll see you soon on a court somewhere around Europe. Thank you. Uh, thank you. See you soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao, Massimo. Ciao, Felix. Ciao, Gianni. Salute, Irina. Ciao, Felix. Ciao, Massimo. Ciao. Ciao, Ciao Gianni. See you. Ciao.